seek the Lord. Somebody say, seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. And I was thinking on the message on last night and how it brought like a hush in the room. It brought a hush in the room because we were finally realizing the severity, huh? The severity of choice, right? We was realizing that, and we were also realizing how you can choose your way out of God. But once you choose to disobey God, the enemy will take away, huh? your ability to choose, right? And so with that came a hush in the room. And I was like, Lord Jesus. And one of the things that the Lord has been ministering to me about that is that I, God, am putting things in perspective, their proper perspective. Are you all working with me? See, the body of Christ is not going to be the church that everyone attends because there are things that are preached and taught to the body of Christ that everyone will never receive. Hallelujah. And, but the standard will not change and the word cannot be broken. Hallelujah. It cannot be broken and the standard will not change. And because of that, many will choose, I'm not going to go to that type of church, a church that just teach the word. No fluff, no charisma, just the word. I'm not, I'm not going to be able to do that. But the word won't change. Oh, hallelujah. We were talking about the great falling away. This is one of the things that is going to cause it, is that the word of God is uncompromising. Are you all working with me? It is uncompromising. Amen. And so God says, I'm bringing things in their proper perspective. I'm showing you, and God had, amen, amen, I don't want to say the nerve, but God just said it. I'm showing you that you can't choose me unless I choose you first. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That just took away the dominance and the arrogance of man's mind in believing at any time he like, he can just choose God. Oh, hallelujah. And if you don't believe these words, how many times you've seen people come to the altar after they have chosen to be saved and still don't get saved? Oh, y'all quiet. <clears throat> and it is not that the minister is not anointed. It's not that the service is not anointed. It's simply because God didn't choose them. Oh. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love the question mark on your face. I love it because it, it, it tells me to explain, elaborate, right? What if God is not concerned with quantity, but he's more concerned with the purity of a heart that is actually seeking after him? What if God would, would, would sift through masses of people and choose one person that really want him. Even though there are masses of people that are saying, Father, I want you. But what if he can look in, all, in, the, in the hearts of the masses and see that you want me in this moment, but you don't want me? Hallelujah. Can you play something for me right quick? You want me because the, the atmosphere is set in the room. And see, that can create a mood. And you can believe that that's the same as wanting God. Are you all working with me? And see, you can come in a service where the preacher gets in tune with that. And you'll believe that to be the anointing. Oh, y'all quiet. You'll believe that to be the anointing because he'll know my key and he'll begin to play in the key that I'm speaking in. Yes, even when we speak, we speak in key. Are you all working with me? Hallelujah. See how we got on the same key? And people will begin to believe that that's the anointing, but that's nothing but skill. That's nothing but charisma. 
that is performing and people be will begin to believe that they are at the place of really wanting God. But God is looking for that person who hates who they are. Not the person that's caught up in the moment, caught up in the music, caught up in, in the atmosphere, but they hate who they are. They hate this lust that they're held captive by. They hate this pride, they hate this temper. They hate this fornication, they hate this, this relationship, they hate this lesbianism, they hate this homosexuality, they hate it. And then they begin to cry out to God. See, not all come to God like that. And God says, now I'll choose that person. And when he chooses them, the scripture is fulfilled. No man can come to the Father except he be drawn. Oh, y'all quiet. God began to draw them. You see, in the arrogance of man, we put God down here and us up here saying, I'll choose you when I get finished doing what I'm doing. And God says, that has never been. That's a fallacy. That it has never been that way. If I don't put me in your heart to choose me, you'll never choose me. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Because God is not interested in, in quantity. He's not interested in saying, well, I saved 200 people tonight. To him, one soul is just as much as 200. Oh, y'all quiet. If he saved one person, he's happy. Oh, we ought to give God a better praise than that. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God gave us that, the severity of choices, you know? And he let us know that Adam and Eve lost the ability to make a choice once they first made a choice. Amen? Hallelujah. And then he comes back and says, now, now seek God. Seek the Lord. Somebody say, seek the Lord. Somebody say, seek the Lord. I submit to you tonight that we're in a climate of time where we need to seek the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. We need to seek the Lord. We're in perilous times. We're in perilous times. We need to seek the Lord. I was watching, amen, on the news where these guys got out, amen, got out of a, a SUV and just went and just sprayed up a crowd with machine guns. They don't care who they hit, who they kill. That's the time that we're living in. And our children are going into schools, amen, in this time. They're in malls in this time. We need to seek the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Is God talking to anybody? We're in a time where you got to know what God is saying. You got to know that God said go to Walmart. God said go get your car wash. Oh, y'all quiet. We're in a time where you got to know that God say go to the mailbox. Oh, y'all quiet. We got to seek. Somebody say seek. We got to seek the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. As many as are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. I have to be led by the Spirit now. Oh, is God talking to anybody? Amen. Apostle, you ready? Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to start. And it is the heart and mind of God. It is the heart and mind of God mm -hmm. to send us out as his messengers mm -hmm. and witnesses mm -hmm. of his love for mankind. Uh -huh. And this he will do. Mm -hmm. I ask the Lord concerning the posture that we must take for each of us to be a part of his end time global revival. Mm -hmm. He simply said, I change not. Now remember when I just said it has never been that way. It has never been the way that we, we perceived it to, as, as in we choose God when we get ready to. Hallelujah. No, it, it's not that way. And so now he says, I change not. Mm -hmm. I'm still the same God that, that spoke to Abraham. I'm still the same God that spoke to Joshua. I'm still that, I change not. Mm -hmm. I don't change with the time. You know, you know how grandparents, when they were parents, they were rough and hard, strict, 
nothing was gotten away with, but when they became grandparents, they got soft, more compassionate. Now when you, when you chastise and discipline, oh, it don't take all that. <laughs> Be a little merciful. Where was the mercy in 1980? Where was the mercy, you know? Where was the mercy when we was just in the vicinity while grown folk were talking? And you look over there, excuse me, get out of the wrong folks. Come on, somebody. But God says I'm not the grandparent. I don't change. I don't, I don't change. I don't take something in, and it was once a standard, but it's not a standard any longer. Oh, is God talking to anybody? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't change, and how I deal with sin never changes. Oh, is God talking to anybody? Hallelujah. So what God said, I change not. Do as do, it is done. Uh -huh. Do as it was done in the days of old. Uh-huh. Second Chronicles 36, 15 says, mm -hmm. And the Lord God of their father sent to them by his messengers, uh -huh. rising up betimes uh -huh. and sending because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. Mm -hmm. But they mocked the messengers uh -huh. of God and despised his words uh -huh. and misused his prophets. They did what? Misused his prophets uh -huh. until the wrath of the Lord arose against the people uh -huh. till there was no remedy. Uh -huh. The message above begins to explain how and why the Lord chastened Israel mm -hmm. by using the army of the Chaldeans. Mm -hmm. Before the wrath of God was poured out upon them, he sent messengers to them crying out for repentance and to return to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Rising up betimes. Uh -huh. It means to inquire early. To do what? To inquire early. To inquire early. I, I, want, us to, I want us to examine that. To inquire early, early in the morning, mm -hmm. huh? Early in the morning. You know the Lord's Prayer. What is the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us, wait a minute. That don't sound like a prayer at midnight. That don't sound like a prayer in the middle of the day. But before this day gets started, give us this day. Look at the reverence God wants. Don't assume you have the day. Don't live, oh, y'all ain't working. Sister Pickett, is they with me yet? Don't live under the assumption that today is promised. Because not only tomorrow is not promised, today is not promised. Come on, somebody. It's not promised you're going to finish today. Oh, hallelujah. So give, somebody say, give us. Give Come on, church, preach with me. Give us. Give us, give us this day our what? All right, so, so what, what is it saying, Prime? Let's start, huh? Let's start in the posture of prayer. I tell you this, that we're only as strong as our prayer life. Amen. When you cease to pray, hallelujah, I don't care how much studying you do. Hallelujah, I don't care how much pre preaching you do. When you cease praying, you lose strength. I say you lose strength, son of God. When, when it's no longer necessary to seek God. It's no, long, no longer necessary. And you know what? In seeking God, amen. Can we stay here for a minute? Hallelujah. You know where God wants us to go back to Tasha? To a place when we, when we first got saved, we reverence the experience of prayer. 
we reverence the experience of prayer. I, amen? I don't follow Islam, right? But I am aware that when they pray, they point themselves, I believe, to the east. Huh? And, and th because they reverence prayer. Many of us, we pray in the car like it ain't nothing. You know, we pray in the, in the line at Walmart. Hallelujah. And I'm not saying you can't. Hallelujah. But you need a moment to actually reverence God. Yes. Stop making, stop fitting God in your convenience. Oh, y'all quiet. Stop fitting God in your convenience and he got to get in where he fit in. Hallelujah. But before your day start, oh my God, before your day start, ask him for your day. That's true respect. Oh, hallelujah. That's true respect. Saying, I, I, I need you to give me this day, my daily bread. I need you to give it to me. Hallelujah. I need you to give me what will sustain me for just today. Huh? Somebody say, seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Are you all working with me tonight? And I need to do it in the morning. That's why we're so effective. 36 years of ministry. Because for 36 years, we've had somebody praying in the morning. Amen. Praying. Amen. We've suffered many storms. That ministries, amen, suffer. Hallelujah. But somebody is praying. Oh, hallelujah. I know that we've, we've received a lot of revelation, but I'm, I'm glad that we have never received a revelation that, that minimized the necessity of prayer. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I thank God for the prayer council. Amen. I, Amen. I do. I thank God for the prayer council. Hallelujah. But I thank God for all the intercessors. There are people that, hallelujah, there are people that are not on the prayer council, but they are natural intercessors. That's right. Or oh, is God talking to anybody? Hallelujah. And I thank God for them. Hallelujah. Amen. Because as long as somebody's praying, somebody's on the wall. That's right. Is God talking to anybody? Somebody's on the wall as long as somebody is praying. Hallelujah. But we need to pray. Somebody say early in the morning. Early in the morning. That's a form of respect and acknowledgement that, God, I'm not in control. Is God talking to anybody? Read, Apostle. To seek early and earnestly, mm -hmm. to look for early and diligently, mm -hmm. to start early in the morning. Mm -hmm. I truly believe that this word, be times, refers to before the times of the day begin. Mm -hmm. In other words, the first watch of the day is at 6 a.m. Uh -huh. This 6 a.m. watch is the start of a new day in which there are five more watch hours. Seek the Lord betimes simply means before you begin your day. Uh -huh. The prophets of old communed with God enough to know his preferred fellowship. Okay. They met him early in the morning. Mm -hmm. They discovered that he rose up early to look upon the nation mm -hmm. and to see if there were any who sought after him uh -huh. on behalf of the nation uh -huh. and sending. Mm -hmm. It was also in these early morning sessions that the sending forth of the word of God to the people took place. Mm -hmm. The eyes of the Lord are always upon the body of Christ and the nations of the world. Uh -huh. The prophets of God ought to be seeking him early for a word that would make them his messengers. Now watch this. It says they ought to be what? Seeking, seeking him yes. early. Early. Or oh, is God talking to him? For a word. Or oh, is God talking? But for, for, for a word of what now? Say that one part again. To make, that would make them his messengers. His messengers, right? Mm -mm. They ought to be seeking God early. You know, one of the things that God was, was sharing with me, and I'm asking that the Holy Ghost give me articulation of this, is that 
a man of God, a true man of God, does not look like what most people see today as a man of God. Right. But a man of God is someone completely devoted to God. Right. Are y'all working with me? Y'all working with me? Yes. He is not in style. He is not in style. All right. His life is somewhat of a recluse. Because he understands his position in this world. Yes. I, I, my eyes came open last night when mom mentioned the gatekeeper. Right? The gatekeeper to your household. Yes. Amen. But the man of God, amen, and, and I'm, I'm using man of God, but you could put woman of God there too. They, they are somewhat a recluse because they're in constant communication with the Father. That's right. Because they know that this is necessary. That's right. It is necessary that I constantly be in fellowship with the Father. That's right. Oh, hallelujah. Early in the morning, let my priority be hearing what God is saying. Oh, hallelujah. Let my priority be that, not that I appear to be a man of God, not that I appear to be the oracle of God, but that I actually do. Are you all working with me? And so God began to say this to me, and he was letting me know, I'm not telling you this for you to have something to preach. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all quiet. I'm telling you this because Michael in order for you to move into the ministry that, that you can see afar off, you got to cross this threshold. Amen. You got to constantly pray. Yeah. Ooh, such a simple message tonight. Yeah. We, we, oh, hallelujah. You have to constantly pray. That's right. Constantly. You have to pray when everybody else is chilling. Right. You have to be praying while others are laughing taking the world as a joke. You need to be praying. Oh, y'all quiet. Oh, th because the one that's praying understands their position in this world as sons of God. We are intercessors. Oh, y'all quiet. We are not friends to the world. We're not here to blend in with the world. We are the world's intercessor. Oh, y'all quiet. That's why we can't take on its customs. Oh, y'all quiet. That's why we cannot lose fellowship with God to, to gain fellowship with the world because we are the world's intercessor. And we have to be praying. We have to be praying. And I saw this, I said, okay. Well, what are you saying, Lord? Your day has to change. Is God talking to anybody? Are y'all receiving this? Your day has to change. Your day can't be so consumed with what you got to do. But you need to start your day saying, Lord, what would you have me do? What would you have me do? Oh, hallelujah. What, what are we doing today? Are you all working with me? What are we doing today? And then God will say, okay, I want you to go here. And I want you to go here. And he don't tell you all the ramifications of it. He don't tell you what's going to happen. But just obey. Just obey. Oh, hallelujah. Just obey. Hallelujah. We talk about the Jesus ministry. But sometimes we never talk about the fact that him being God in the flesh still prayed to the Father. Amen. Every day. Every day. I was thinking, I was thinking about Smith Wigglesworth. Smith Wigglesworth had a routine that he prayed or read a scripture every 15 minutes. Ooh, hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah. It's quiet, it got quiet in here. His routine was either I'm going to pray or I'm going to read a scripture every 15 minutes. But every time he tried to heal people, they were healed. Come on, somebody. But he stayed in constant fellowship with God. With God. I heard the Lord, and, 
and, and, and, and, hallelujah. I heard the Lord clearly say some people would trade the power of the Holy Spirit. They would trade that huh, for the power of a Facebook post. Come on. Come on, Mike. Smith Wigglesworth prayed and read the scriptures every 15 minutes. Some of us read and scroll every 15 minutes and expect to have the same power with God. Or oh, is God talking to anybody? Hallelujah. Some of us will trade the power of the Holy Ghost, huh? for the power of a Facebook post. Looking spiritual on Facebook. Having a form of godliness, but denying the actual power. Is God talking to anybody? Hallelujah. I don't want to be that individual. I don't want to be that individual where Facebook runs my life or social media runs my life and, and as long as I'm deemed as holy by Facebook followers, I'm okay. Yeah. No, I wanna give my whole self to God. Yes. I wanna just devote my whole self to God. Oh, is God talking to anybody? Hallelujah, the, somebody ought to come, come to this decision. With the rest of my life, God, I wanna give it to you yeah. because you have given me the rest of my life. Yeah. Oh, y'all quiet. I want to give you the rest of my life. And what does that look like, Sister Esperanza? Amen. No longer living to my own will. Hallelujah. But living to your will. Come on, somebody. And in order for me to do that, I need to know your will. I need you to constantly feed me your will. And I can hear, amen, the question in your mind, well, if I have the Holy Ghost, don't I know the will of God? Yes, yes. But how do you know the will of God? By staying inside of his protocol. And he put prayer in place. He wants you to actually have a conversation with him daily. Yes. Oh, we ought to give God a praise if you understand. God, raise your hand if you have children in here. Hallelujah, that are grown. Amen. Some of you have grown children. Amen. You don't want to always, amen, get a text message from them. Are you all working with me? Hallelujah. But sometimes you want to see their face. Oh, is God talking? And you want them to hear your voice and you want to hear their voice. Come on, somebody. Well, how much more do the Heavenly Father want to have an actual conversation with us? Oh, I heard God just now. You, some of us don't even realize. Some of us don't even realize how privileged we are to be able to have a conversation, amen, with the great architect of all things, the great creator of all creation. Oh, y'all quiet. God says, God says, don't you know I don't even talk to any and everything and everybody, but I have made myself available to you and you won't even talk to me? Oh my God. I don't even talk to everybody, but my line is always open to my children. And you don't see that as a special thing? Oh, hallelujah. God don't talk to everybody. Uh -uh. God don't talk to everybody. You look in the old covenant, amen, sometimes it be one prophet that God talking to out of the whole world. God didn't tell everybody what he told Noah. Out of the whole world. Come on, somebody. And God said, you don't think it, think it to be a privilege that I want to talk to you? Is God talking to anybody? Come on, let's give God a praise. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Apostle, read for me. If they approached him with a pure heart. If they did what? Approached him with a pure heart. It is essential, a pure heart. Mm -hmm. Is essential. You cannot talk to God, huh? In a fellowshipping manner. 
unless your heart is pure. That's right. Can't. Hallelujah. And that's something, amen, that was apart from last night's message that I, if, you, if you will find that when God says they won't acknowledge they're wrong. They won't acknowledge they're wrong, but they just approach. Oh, it's God. I've done that before. Anybody ever done that? I know it's a hard truth to admit. Anybody ever, you knew that it was something that God required you to do before you came to him in prayer. And you had not done that. It may have took, taken some humiliation. Oh, hallelujah. It may have taken letting a person be up here and you down here. And so you didn't do it, but you still approached God. And you knew that God didn't hear that prayer. I've, I've seen when, when people are wrestling with that reality in their prayer, they begin to pray louder, more forceful. Have you ever heard a person pray like they're mad? And you say, well, what's going on? You're talking to Jesus. <laughs> How did you get so mad? <laughs> you talking to Jesus, baby. Why are you Father God? In the name of Jesus. And you're actually mad. The spirit don't produce that. Thank you, That's sis. Right. Come on. I know many of us come from the Pentecostal movement, and, and when those sisters got deep, they, they faces got a certain way, but they weren't mad, though. You're not supposed to be mad in prayer. Come on now. Oh, hallelujah. Matter of fact, you're supposed to hope that God ain't mad with you in prayer. But how dare you approach God mad? Hallelujah. Why? Because you're battling something on the inside. And see, when you're battling something on the inside, something that is simple becomes real, real hard to do. Prayer is simple. Y'all quiet. Prayer is simple, Sister Pinky. All I got to do is, is, you know, it's so simple that Jesus was able to give an outline to prayer. Come on. He actually said, when you pray, say, our Father, our Father. You know, he gave an outline because it was so simple if the heart is pure. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes people pray all night because they're trying to take all night to purify their heart. Hallelujah. But prayer is simple. All I got to do is be holy. When I'm holy, there's nothing on the line impeding me from hearing from God or God from hearing me. Are y'all working with me? And then I can ask what I will. That's right, and I don't have to beat heaven's door down in my asking. Is God talking to anybody? But if I'm not pure, somebody say, if I'm not pure. But if I'm not pure, now it's hard. And I'm pressing. And I'm pushing. Hallelujah. And don't let me have an audience in prayer with me. Hallelujah. You know why? Because the enemy talking to your mind. You know the enemy telling you? No, it ain't the enemy. Let me, let me rephrase that. It's the Holy Ghost telling you you really don't need to be praying. That's right. And you're trying to drown him out. The, the Holy Ghost telling you, you need, to let, you need to let Pinky pray. Or you need, to let, you need to let Grace pray. But they asked me to pray and I'm going to pray. But you know you're not clean. You know you're not pure. Hallelujah. And they may have not known it, but you knew it. But, but they asked me and I can't let them know that the reason why I'm not praying is because my heart is not pure. So you know what? I'm going to negate the whole moment of prayer. I'm going to sacrifice the whole experience of prayer that my reputation be saved. Is God talking to anybody yet? Hallelujah. It's better to say, look, I know I should be in a place to pray, but I'm not. 
And so I need you to pray, Pastor Wanda. Hallelujah. And I'm going to, and I'm going to be over here purifying my heart. Come on, somebody. God will honor the honesty. Hallelujah. Rather than you just acting as if, hallelujah, there is no art between him and you. Oh, hallelujah. You become as that person who knew they did wrong, but you don't have the character to apologize. There are people that know that they wrong people, but they can never just say, look, I am sorry. Hallelujah. That's how people come to God. I know I'm not holy. I know I have offense and iniquity in my heart, and I know you told me not to come to you like this, but I'm going to force you to hear me. I'm going to force you to hear me. And guess what? I won't let the prayer go. Y'all missed what I just said. I won't, I won't even let the prayer go because they asked me to lead prayer. That's why we've got to know them that labor right. among us because there's some people that hinder the whole prayer because they are not pure. And what do we say, Byron? Will you lead us in prayer? Well, if you're going to lead me in prayer, you got to be pure. Oh, is God talking to anybody? Hallelujah. If you're going to lead me, you have to be a person whose prayers are availing much. Hallelujah. But people will hinder the whole prayer as long as they keep their reputation intact. Oh, is God talking to anybody? Oh, oh, but, but I submit this, Esperanza, hallelujah, and I don't know how we're going to receive this part, amen, but sometimes we are the onlookers locked hands with that person, and we know that they are not anointed. We know, this, something ain't right about this prayer. It is time now to say, um, stop, stop praying. I'll pray. We all quiet. I, I'll, I'll, I'll pray. When you do that, it is because you really respect God. Oh, y'all quiet. <laughs> Baby, I, I, I know I, I, my bad. I'm the one who asked you to pray. Oh, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Y'all quiet. It's, it, it's sometimes we got to share the blame. I know I asked you to pray. But when you started praying, I realized, no. You don't even have to have that long of a conversation. Just tell them, I got it. I'll pray, I'll pray. And you know what they're gonna do? They say, I thought, oh, you wanna pray? Okay. <laughs> with they mad self. <laughs> mad with they self. But don't let them hinder the whole prayer. Oh, is God talking to anybody? Don't let them hinder the whole prayer. You know, it's people believe that they were saved because a leader said that they were saved. That's right. And, and to, for, for the leader to keep their reputation, they won't tell them, I was wrong. Right. Come on, somebody. Sometimes you just got to say, I, I know I said this to you, but I, I, I overlooked it. I didn't see something. I was wrong. Right. Oh, y'all quiet. It's the time of purity. It's a time of purity. Hallelujah. And you cannot be protecting you and be pure. Hallelujah. You got to be pushed aside. Is God talking to anybody? Hallelujah. Are you ready with a pure heart? Mm hmm. Amen. If they approach him with a pure heart mm -hmm. and a sincere love for the people of God mm -hmm. and the nations of this world, uh -huh. then he would indeed reveal his heart and mind to them. Mm -hmm. There would be ascending. Mm -hmm. Likewise, he would make known to you the things that need to know, the things you need to know concerning your personal life. Uh -huh and those involved with you. Uh -huh. He would answer the questions in your heart simply because you acknowledged him early. Mm -hmm. Psalm 78, 34 says, when he slew them, mm -hmm. then they saw him. Then they sought him. And they returned and inquired early after God. Look at this, Pastor Val. After he slew them, then they sought him. And they saw them early. 
They needed an answer. Sometimes the greatest thing for a soul is calamity. It's one of the most costly lessons, but sometimes it takes calamity. It takes God slaying you. Huh? Because he's the only God that can slay you and bring you back to life. Are you all working with me? But it takes that slaying to cause you to seek him. I'm watching people go through that. I, I went through that. Hey, Bishop. I went through that. I went through God slaying me. I, I know I'm not the only person in the room that is going through that. I went through God taking it all from me. Everything. And, and I would not be in God now if I didn't go through that. Can we slow down a little bit? If God would have left me and my reputation intact, I probably would be in hell now. But God says, I need to slay you. I need to, I, I need to knock you all the way down. I need to knock you all the way down. And when you're down, I need to put my foot on you. And all the onlookers that try to pull you out from up under my foot, I look at them and say, what? I'm God. I'll let them up when I let them up. You can pray for him. You could feel for him. But he's not getting up until I let him up. That was the greatest merciful thing that he ever did. Oh, y'all ought to give God a better praise. Hey, Jesus. He says, here go Michael. Boom. Boom. Here come Doc. Get off of him. What? Here come Tanya. What? Here come Michelle. Here come BT. What? No. You're trying to save him, the him that you know. I'm trying to save his soul. And this is need be. I got, I got, a, I got, a, I got, a, and I got to put weight on it. I got to put weight on it. When he think he about to get up, I got to put some more weight on it. Or is God talking to anybody? But this, it don't look like it, Pastor Wonder, but this is mercy. This is mercy. Oh, y'all quiet. Oh, I, when God says, uh-uh, I'm, I'm not going to let you. Uh-uh, I'm, I'm not going to let you go. I'm not going to let you be. I'm not going to let you do all that's in your mind to do. I'm going to stop you and everything that your hands touch is going to fail. Oh, hallelujah. And I'm going, to, I'm going to remove all of your influence. Oh, see, y'all didn't catch what I just said. One of the things that took Lucifer off course was the multitude of his traffic, his influence. He began to believe the, his own hype. Oh, y'all quiet. Amen. And see, that's, that's the thing that many prophets get off course because God once used them. And you allow the fact that God once used you to now take you off course now. You'll begin to believe that you are exempt from the hand of God. Oh, is God talking to anybody? And you'll start believing, I don't have to live nothing. Oh, I wish I had a church in here tonight. Hallelujah. I thank God when God will stop us in our, in our tracks and say, you know what, I'm not going to let you prosper. I'm not going to let you prosper. Uh, hallelujah. And you say, well, I cast out devils in your name. I even imparted the Holy Spirit to people in your name. I know that was yesterday. Oh, y'all missing me tonight. That was yesterday. But I chasten, somebody say, I chasten those that I love. Come on, somebody. So, so this right here, everybody don't get this treatment, but those that I love, I chasten. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, oh I wish, I wish y'all would stop paying attention to what's going on in the room and pay attention to what's going on in the room. God says, I chasten those that I love. Oh, oh don't, don't be envious of those that seem like they prosper in evil. Don't you be envious watching people. I'm so, don't you be envious watching people prosper in evil. Huh? Well, Lord, it look, it look like you'll never do nothing to them. It look like they just go. Huh? 
And you'll never, you'll never chasten them. But God says, this, uh, this, this is the replacement. I got to keep you up there. Hallelujah. God said, this is mercy. When I stop you in your tracks, this mercy, this grace, I chasten those that I love. Oh, is God talking to anybody? I chasten the ones that I love. But, but if, if I just let you prosper, it's because I realize that the chastening won't change you. Oh, y'all quiet. I realize that I could whoop you and you still won't be broken. You have decided to do what you're going to do. Ooh, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I, I remember when I was way off course and I went to jail. I, went to, I was way off course before jail, but I went to jail and I was in a holding cell. And I was in there with a drug dealer and I was in there with his addict. And the drug dealer, I don't know why people want to talk to me, but he started talking to me. He said, man, I ruined this man's life. He snitched on me and that's why I'm in here, but I'm not even mad at him. He said, because I remember when he first started coming to me, he was whole. And look what I've done to his life. I've ruined his life. And the drug addict, he's over there going through what they go through, you know? And then after a while, I'm sitting in the, I'm in the corner on the floor, smiling. And they say, you know where you at, right? You in a holding cell. I say, yes, ain't in hell. I'm in a holding cell. And the drug dealer said, he said, I guess that is a way to look at it. I say, you just don't know. I'm so glad because I saw the chastening of the Lord and what it was saying to me, I'm not done with you, Michael. Oh, we ought to give God a better praise. And all I needed to know is that he wasn't done with me. And so even if he let me know that through a jail cell, it was still, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a praise. Amen. So when he slew Michael, then Michael sought him and returned and inquired early mm -hmm. after God. Uh-huh. It should not take the righteous indignation of God coming upon the body of Christ for us to seek him. Look what this word is saying. It should not take the righteous indignation of God, the judgment of God, to make us seek him. All right, read. It should not be that, it should not be that evil has to come into your home mm -hmm. or sphere of influence for you to seek the counsel of the Lord. Uh -huh. You need to have fellowship with the Father. Mm -hmm. He lives in you and by his spirit, the Holy Ghost is waiting for us to fellowship with him. Mm -hmm. He has so many things to tell us mm -hmm. and to show us, mm -hmm. but we are too busy or too occupied with the affairs of this world. You know, come on, we ought to give God a praise right there. Come on, you give God a praise right there. You, you know, when I read this part, I started thinking about, like I was saying about how, how people use Facebook and it occupy. It occupies so much of their time, you know, knowing what's going on in other people's lives. Huh? But the Holy Spirit, I love the fact when God brought us to the realization that the Holy Spirit is a person. He's a person. And he wants the fellowship with us. But, but, but I learned this, sister, about the Holy Spirit, that he has a way about him. He has a way about him. He's not the person that you could do this with. Hey, Holy Ghost, how you doing? Um, Dr. Baines, da 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 and Holy Spirit, and Dr. Baines, da 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 da, -da. He wants all of your time. Amen. Oh, y'all quiet. He wants all of you, right? And he won't share the experience of conversation with you. He won't share that. That's why even in fasting, he said, now when you get ready to fast, tell the wife or tell the husband, because I want this time. Are y'all working with me? 
you know, make sure it's all right with your wife and all right with your husband because I'm not going to share this time. Hallelujah. I'm not going to share this time. I want all of you. Is God talking to anybody? Hallelujah. And, and he would open up huh, the mysteries of the mind of God to us if we ever give him time. Give him time. One of the things that, that the ministry, one of the directions that the ministry went in, are you all still with me tonight? One of the directions that the ministry went in that God stopped us in our tracks is when we value learning over worship. We begin to, we value just hearing another revelation over worshiping inside of the revelation. Worshiping inside of the new man. I am a new creature. Come on, somebody. Salvation is a sinless life. Worshiping, see, that, what it, that is what it means to worship in spirit and in what? Truth. But we begin to devalue worship, not realizing that worship is when you fellowship with God even inside of your emotions. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I need Oh, Esperanza, pray for me right now. Hallelujah, because I don't know how to, how to articulate this. Emotions. Mm, Jesus. Any, anybody in here married? Would you have married a robot? Somebody that don't have no emotions. Amen. But emotions are a way of showing affection. Oh, hallelujah. But the, the children of God, emotions are supposed to be unto God. We are supposed to show that affection to God in worship. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. But when you don't, and you just want the next word, you got you to examine. Maybe I just want something to preach, something to teach, something that makes me unique. Why don't I want the experience of worship? I've, I've been in services where the word was never preached, but the worship service brought deliverance. Yes. 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 The worship service brought deliverance. I'm talking about the, the shackles and, and the strongholds were broken in worship because people's hearts begin to cry out to God in a purity. Oh, hallelujah. And nobody was trying to outsing the other person, but everybody was making a joyful noise unto the Lord in purity. Oh, my God. And it broke something. Oh, my God. It broke something in those that were fellowshipping with God in worship. So you can never devalue worship. Oh, hallelujah. Don't... Don't make worship a three-song segment in the service. Mm -mm. We gotta, thank you, Maitland. Three songs, that's our worship. God is, God is greater than our three songs. And stop telling God, amen, when to cut the worship off. Because you know people got to do this. You know people got to do it. Don't you know that that's when you have God in the wrong perspective? He is God. He is omnipresent. He is the omnipotent ruler. Come on, somebody. He holds time in his hand. So you don't tell God how much time he got. Oh, is God talking to anybody in here tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I submit to you, if God take away all the revelation, amen, that he has given me, don't take away worship. Lord God, let me wake up worshiping you. Oh, you say, how did you move this message to worship? Because what do you think seeking God is? Amen. I will worship God. Job went through the worst trial of his life, and the first thing he did was fall on his face and begin to worship. Oh, y'all quiet. David went through the trial of his life, and the first thing he did was worship. He did not teach. He did not preach, but he worshiped. He sought God. Oh, is God talking to anybody? Sometimes God will show you your vulnerability to show you that you need to worship. 
Yes, oh Lord. God, yes, I wish Lord. I had a church in here. Hallelujah. He'll let you come to a place where your flesh can't do no more for you. Your skill can't bring you no further. Your charisma can't bring you no further. And now you got to actually worship. Now you got to actually seek him. Now you got to be for real about it. Or oh, is God talking to anybody? He'll bring you to a place where skill can't bring you through. Who you know can't bring you through. You got to actually seek his face. Oh my God. Oh my God. It pleases God when his people get on their face and seek his face. It pleases God when we say, I need you right now in this moment. Oh, I wish I had a church in here. It pleases God when, he's, when you say, I can't help myself. I can't deliver myself. I need you in this moment. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. And we trying to skip over worship to get another word. But the word is worship. The word is seek me. I am God. Oh hallelujah. I am the heavenly father. And you need me going in. You need me coming out. Oh, hallelujah. Don't you ever forsake worship. Don't you let, amen, the devil tell you that worship is not value. Worship is not necessary. It is necessary to start your day off with worship. It is necessary to say, God, I won't even start until you tell me where to go. I won't even move until you tell me what to do. I won't move until I hear your voice. Hey, Jesus. Worship. Oh, hallelujah. I learned from Job. Job lost everything. And the first thing he do is rent his clothes and worship and say, naked, I come into the world and naked will I leave out. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. He began to worship. Oh, hallelujah. Sometimes God will look in our life and he say, you have too much of a safety net. So I'm going to remove your safety net where you're going to have to depend on me. You're going to have to depend on me with your emotions and trust that I can keep your emotions. Sometimes the husband will be unavailable emotionally. Oh, Y'all quiet. Sometimes the wife won't even get it. Hallelujah. And God says, because I'm trying to teach you that you got to trust me. Some people worship their spouse. But when their spouse show fallibility, their whole world fall apart because they're not supposed to worship their spouse. Oh, is God talking to anybody? Hallelujah. You're not in charge of my happiness. You're not in charge of my peace. Oh, I ain't, ain't going to get no help in here. They got this as saying, be his peace. No, my Bible tell me Christ is the peace that surpasses understanding. You better have peace before you get into marriage. Hallelujah. You can't be my peace. Because when you become my peace, you become my source. And you are not my source. Or oh, oh, is God talking to anybody? But if I keep worship in his proper perspective, I'll seek God for peace. And if I seek God for peace, then I won't lay an indictment on you when you're emotionally unavailable. When you don't get it. When you can't relate to what I'm going through, I won't be offended with you because my peace don't begin with you and it don't end with you. I love you to death, but my peace is dependent upon the Lord. My peace is dependent upon what comes out of the mouth of the Father. My peace, oh Jesus, hallelujah. My peace. Oh, hallelujah. You wonder why God let you and your best friend fall out every now and then. Sometimes because there's too much trust in that relationship. Hallelujah. You, you are seek your best friend. Amen. When you should be seeking God. I wish I had a church in here. Hallelujah. You'll seek their counsel instead of seeking God. So God will let y'all fall out. Oh, is God talking to anybody? Hallelujah. And then you'll realize, you know what? All I need is God. All I need is God. Prime, what do you think Jesus meant? What do you think he was talking about? 
when he's told the devil, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You know what Jesus was putting in place? That man would need to hear God, seek God every day, and that would be his source. Oh, is God talking to anybody? God didn't, say, God didn't say my wife is my source or my children is my source. Your husband is, God, no, no. They will be unavailable sometime. As much as they may want to be there, they'll miss it. Come on, somebody. And you'll get so angry with them because you've put so much on them. You put them in the place where God got to be. I wish I had a church in here. Oh, I'm finna go a little further. Amen. Hallelujah. So get your amens in now. Hallelujah. But not even your pastor supposed to be your source. Oh, I, I know. I, I, I know. Hallelujah. Amen. We look to our leadership for the word, but they're not to be our, the source of our peace. And this is not an anti-leadership message, but this is keeping things in their proper perspective. God is my peace. And I have peace because I talk to him every day. A friend of mine called me right before I came here tonight and he said, I just need to talk to a level-headed person. I said, well, I'm here. Probably missed the level-headed part, but I'm here. And he told me of a situation and, and he wanted to pop off. And I say, don't do it. You don't have to do that. Come on, somebody. You don't owe nobody nothing that you got to prove something. Come on, somebody. We're at the age in our life where, where what we didn't do in our youth, we don't need to do. If you didn't get it done in your 20s and your 30s, you don't need to do it in your 40s. Come on, somebody. You don't need to, I say, I told him, I say, I'll tell a joker quick. I'm calling the police. I'm going to do what everybody else, I'm calling the police. You hit me, I'm calling the police. I'm not going to leave my wife, my children, my church, because I'm trying to prove that I can fight. If I didn't prove it in my 20s, if I didn't prove it in my teens, then it, I don't need to, it's a done deal. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But why? And he says, thank you, Michael. Thank you. You know, because sometimes you need your homeboy to tell you it's all right. Huh? To not be brawly. Sometimes you need your homeboy to tell you, bro, let that mess go, man. Keep on living your life. Don't disrupt your life with calamity. Let that mess go. Keep on living your life. Or is God talking to anybody? And see, that, that brought him off the cliff. He, he wanted me to tell him that. But sometimes you just need somebody to tell you that. Hallelujah. He wanted me to tell him, man, come on, man. Man, let that junk go. We too old for that. Are you all working with me? But it brought him peace. But he can't bring me peace. My peace it's inward. My peace takes place without a phone call. My peace comes from every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. It, it, my peace comes from hearing what God has said about a thing. Oh, is God talking to anybody? Hallelujah. Is God talking? Oh, hallelujah. Let us go just a, a tad bit further. Hallelujah. Because there's some jewels in this. Are you all still uh, engaged? Yes. Amen. Read, Apostle. 15. Mm -hmm. I will go and return to my place. What, what, what God said? I will go God said, yeah. and return to my place. Uh huh. Till they acknowledge their offense. Until they say, I'm sorry. Amen. Acknowledge their offense. Amen. Ooh, sound like God got in his feelings. I will go and return to my place. Ooh. 
You don't want God to say, I'm not talking to you. Come on. Come on. You don't want God to say, you know what, I'm going back over here. Oh, hallelujah. God is the wrong person to owe an apology to, and you're trying to fix your conversation all around that. Oh, y'all quiet. Oh, y'all. I will return to I my said place. This, I said this to Apostle Banks in a conversation. Apostle Banks say, we have to be Christ in people's lives, even in their shortcomings. That was her counsel to me. We have to be Christ in people's lives, even in their shortcomings. And their shortcomings may be certain things that we don't like, but we have to remain Christ. Amen. And I said to her, but what does that look like? Because being Christ in their life is not to say that there's not a necessity to acknowledge your wrong, though. Right. Oh, y'all quiet. We weren't arguing, we was conferring back and forth. Yes, we have to be Christ, but we don't relieve people of scriptural responsibility. Oh, y'all quiet. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You ever been confronted and, you, and the person say, but well, I still love you. That's well and good. But you better know you said to that person, you wasn't wrong. I really was wrong, though. Come on. Don't just receive their forgiveness, right. but acknowledge that they went off when they came to you. Come on. So that's wrong. They missing me. Have the character of saying, I was wrong. Because that's my responsibility. That's right. Oh, hallelujah. That's my response. Prime, it's my responsibility to acknowledge my wrong. And you can't let me off the hook. That's right. That's right. You can't let me off the hook in the name of being Christ. Because Christ will tell me, you're wrong, and are you ready to admit it? That's right. Ooh, y'all quiet. Oh, hallelujah. He'll tell me you're wrong, and are you ready to acknowledge it? Oh, hallelujah. Hey, Tracy. Hallelujah. You know why that's important? Because that's so easy yeah. to acknowledge you were wrong. But when that's not so easy, that's what's the problem. Right. That's the problem. When that... Because that is actually so easy. But when that is not so easy, there lies the problem. Come on, somebody. And God says, well, I'll go back into my place until they're ready to acknowledge their offense. Ooh, hallelujah. Until they acknowledge their offense? Mm -hmm. And seek my face. And do what? And seek my face. And seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me early. Look at this. Ooh. Ooh. In their affliction. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I've heard people say, I've heard people say that I am all right with God. Mm -hmm. But you see God afflicting them. Yes. Not the normal chastening of the Lord. Come on. But you know that it's affliction. Yeah. Because they will not acknowledge they are not all right. Y'all with me? Yeah, come on. I, uh, hallelujah. Tasha, people will watch 
their children get turned out by the devil while they saying they all right. They will what? If you all right, you got power. Come on. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to get. They will watch their children one by one get plucked by the devil. That's right. While they're still saying, but I'm all right. I'm all right. I know I'm in the will of God. I hear the question, and we're going to answer it. Amen. Well, people have their own wills, and what if the children, you know, just chose against God? Hallelujah. What if the children just chose against God? That happens, but not all the time. Not all the time. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to show you something. In Scripture, you see one prodigal son. Because he was not the standard of what happens when you obey God. He was not the standard of what happens. Let me show you, show you what is the standard. Jesus testifies to the Father in prayer that all those that you've given me, I have not lost one except the one which was a devil. Right? This is the standard. If Christ is at the center huh, of a community, usually everything around him is either holy or trying to be holy. Because they're not comfortable around him outside of that. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Holiness is contagious. Holiness is contagious. How did you get saved? You saw somebody saved. Oh, y'all quiet. Thank you, Sister Veronica. What made you want to be saved? You didn't even know you was lost until you saw somebody who was found. And it made, oh, it made you want something you didn't even know you needed. So you mean to tell me, look at, I'm, I'm, I'm just, just trying to answer the, the question, Sunshine. You mean to tell me you can entertain somebody on occasion and it, it produced that in you. You can entertain a son of God on occasion and it produced a want in you to be holy. But you can live in a house with a person forever and be holy like Christ. And it, don't never, it, it never produced that want in them, even if they don't come all the way in. Because everybody got to come all the way in on their own. But they still should have a testimony. It's something about your life that make me want to be like you. Are you all working with me? Huh? You living in a house with a person. You got the Shekinah glory of Christ in you. And it has no effect. To believe that is to believe that everybody around you is suffering the Judas syndrome. That they've already decided in their heart that they're reprobate and they never choose God. I like this. Let's say that again. To believe that is to believe that everybody around you is reprobate. I believe that the Holy Ghost, if, it, if Cornelius was able to invite an apostle to his house and his whole house gets saved, I believe the Holy Ghost is still the same. His whole house got saved. If in the book of Acts, 3,000 people were, was added to the church from one message, I believe the Holy Ghost is the same. You know why it's quiet in here? I'm going to tell you why it's quiet. And, and this is not an indictment. It's just the Holy Spirit. Because we don't want to embrace that something in us has impeded 
the power of the Holy Ghost to influence our circle. We don't want to embrace that. So we're going to put it on. People are going to do what they want to do. People are going to do what they're led to do. Come on, somebody. We don't ever want to put the onus on ourselves. We don't ever want to put the onus on ourselves that, hallelujah, oh my God. I want you to look around. I can, can you look around? Um, Uncle Clarence, stand up. Hey, Amen. Hallelujah. Stand up for me, Uncle Clarence. Stand up, Auntie Barbara. Stand up, Tanya, if you can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand up, Cynthia. Stand up, Bishop Jones. Hallelujah. Stand up, uh, uh, Auntie Barbara. Micaiah, Maya. Stand up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We are fruit of, of one person living holy. Oh, oh, hallelujah. Y'all don't have to give me no help on here. The Holy Ghost helping me. We are extensions of one person living holy. We're not all, amen. Some may, Micaiah, where are you? Hallelujah. Some of us may not be saved, but we're here because one person remained here. Consistency in God has an effect. And holiness has an effect. Stop deep down playing holiness. It will save your whole household. It will. It will. It will. It will. It will. Oh, is God talking to anybody? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why are we in church? Why is Tanya preaching? Why is Cynthia preaching? Because somebody was consistent in God. Oh, it's come on somebody. Hallelujah. And, and God is not loving Dr. Banks more than he loved anybody else in here. If we all stand in the same, oh my God, crutch of the scripture, take God at his word. Oh, hallelujah. That holiness. Somebody say holiness. That holiness, amen. Oh, hallelujah. What, what's that scripture that I will save your children and their children? Come on, somebody. God promised that. Huh? But we have to own it. We have to own it. Sometimes people saw us walk out of character. That messed up, that tainted their view of Jesus. Sometimes they say, if that's salvation, I don't want it. Sometimes they heard us cussing when we got mad. Oh, y'all quiet. Oh, hallelujah. They didn't see that consistent holy life, so they wasn't convinced that they needed it. Oh, hallelujah. At some point we had to come to a place where we was tired of letting them down. They deserve Christ. They deserve to see him all the time. Come on, somebody. They deserve to see him all the time. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Do we have a church in tonight? Come on, let's give God a praise. <clears throat> you know, one of the worst things in the world or in the church is a preacher that knows this truth but don't walk in it. Because we become the biggest confusion to people. Oh, y'all quiet. People can't get saved just by hearing the word. They got to see it in the messenger. Hallelujah. They got to see it in the messenger. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we got to embrace, I know it's hard, we got to embrace that, amen, most of our circles that are not saved, it's not, be, and, and people feel comfortable hanging around you or whatever, but they never get saved? Look at this. Oh, yeah. Are y'all all right with me tonight? Are y'all learning? Look at this. Annette came in, not saved, moved into the house. Get saved. Move into Doc House. Get saved. Hallelujah. Charlene came in one way. Hallelujah. Get saved. Move into the house. Stay saved. Blade came in one way. 
Hallelujah, not saved, get saved. Moved into the house, stay saved. Are y'all seeing a trend here? Come on, somebody. Holiness is contagious. You know what? Satan, Lucia. Don't get offended if you have the unsaved around you and now say that the word is not true. Holiness is contagious. And it makes people want to be saved when they, when they entreat it. This is not an attack. This is just true. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. What did he say? If I be lifted up, I'll do what? Draw how many men? All men unto me. Oh, hallelujah. It's amazing how we get in, in when we hear God, and it goes against our flesh, we get offended. We get offended. You know? There, there's much that I preach that slapped me right in the face while I'm preaching it. But I still got to keep it as the standard of the word. I got to keep it, keep the standard of the word where it is. I can't get offended. Hallelujah. When God rebuked me in the message that I'm preaching. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Read apostle. Read apostle. That was it? Okay. Come on, let's give God a praise. Come on, let's give God a real praise. Come on, let's give God a real praise. Saints, it is time to seek God. Seek him. If people around you and they have no desire to be saved, seek God. Seek him. Why, Lord? Why do I? Don't you know our whole existence in this world is to bring somebody into God. Ray Ray, that's the only reason God left the church in the world is to bring somebody to him. Hallelujah. There are young ladies coming around you, Pinky, and what? Because they want to be saved. They want to be holy. Oh, is God talking to anybody? You don't have no friends outside of that. No friends outside of that. We have a responsibility. A responsibility. I want, I told this to my mom, told this to my family. When I lost my cousin, I realized more so how fleeting our lives are. I realized we here today and gone sometime today. I want to spend the rest of my life trying to help my friends get to heaven. Get to heaven. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I want to spend the rest of my life. I don't have time to have offenses with people. We might go to hell because of one offense. I don't have time not to forgive people. I don't have time to remember people wrong. I want to spend the rest of my life. If, if God brought my uncle to Texas, I want to spend the rest of my life trying to get him to heaven. And he tried to get me to heaven. That's what our relationships are about. Hallelujah. Have you learned anything tonight? Come on, let's give God a praise. Hallelujah. And give him a praise. Amen. Let's praise him. Amen. This has been an awesome word, awesome word, awesome word tonight. Glory to God. This has been an awesome week. This has been an awesome week. Come on. This has been an awesome week. Glory to God. Glory to God. As Mike was ministering, 
I heard the Lord say, my word will not fall to the ground. It'll stand. Acts 2, 38 and 39. Put it on the board, please. Put it somewhere where we can see it. God, see saints, you've got to be able to trust God. If you can't trust God, you don't need to serve him. Why would you serve something you can't trust? Hmm? God wants us to be able to trust him. And I heard, I heard God reiterate tonight through Mike the things that he has said to me coming before I, we got to this conference. He so said, I want you to set some things in order. I want my people to know the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not some impotent spirit in you. The Holy Spirit is God presence in you. He's not impotent. He is powerful and he commands his territory. What does Acts 2.38 say? Then Peter said unto them, they asked him, what must we do to be saved? Watch this. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus for the remission of sins. That's what you need to do. That's what he said. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Huh? You're going to receive. That's, <laughs> then notice what he says in the next verse. Glory to God. For the promise is unto you and to who? Wait a minute. The promise is to you and to your children. And then God took now, in Bible teachers, I can't talk for nobody else's church and nobody else's ministry. I can talk about mine. It's a poor frog that can't praise his own pond. I can talk about this. God took that scripture and, and fulfilled it right in your presence. Come on. He fulfilled it right in your presence. Put it up front so you can look at it. So you can look at it. He saved me and he saved a house. He said, now I'm going to save you and save your house, save all your children, and I'm going to put you at the forefront of a ministry so my people can see it. Now, something Mike said that God had just said it to me before he started, before it came out of his mouth. You're not going to minimize the word of God. You're not going to lower the word of God and bring it to where your little mentality is. You're not going to take God's word and then you start analyzing it and reason it out. And he said something that is so profound. He said, you, you got to lose this attitude that, well, people just going to do what they want to do. No, if you're an intercessor, you can stop them from doing what they want to do. That's the power of intercession. Why are you calling intercessor? Glory to God, amen, so that you can stop the devil in his tracks. Now the thing about it is, you gotta accept what the other thing he said. You gotta face the real truth. You gotta face the real truth. I remember saying to God, I said, look, I'm, I don't, God, I do, you, I know you called me to preach. I can preach in my sleep. You gifted me. But I, I don't, don't want to be out here preaching and saving everybody else's children and all mine going to hell. No. Fulfill your promise to me. You say mine as I serve you. Saints, let me tell you something. You got to own something tonight. You got to own something tonight. You got to own the fact that, glory to God, God's, God spoke a specific to me. He spoke a specific to me while Mike was ministering. 
you know, you, in a, you, you got people in your territory. And then he started telling you how all these young people came in. I put them in my house. Amen. They came in. They got saved in the church. They stayed in my house. They still saved today. They're serving God. Amen. Been serving God for 30 something years. Got them right off the street. High, violent, and now they, they're so precious. Charlene came in a drug, a, a drug addict. Now she's, glory to God, got a drug clinic delivering other folks. Come on now. Amen. But you got to own something. You got to own this. You got to own it. When God, when, 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 when God, you, you full of the Holy Ghost, glory to God, and, 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 and you got a house full of children, children. You got a house full of them. Some of them yours, some of them might not be yours, but they, they, in, they in your sphere of influence. And especially your children. See, you, you think that you're making an example, that your children see you as an example simply because you go to church. They know that you're going to be to church on Wednesday night. You, mama going to church on Wednesday and Friday and Sunday. Mama going to church. And you think that's enough to make an impression on those children. Those ch children are not dealing with mama at church. Those children are dealing with mama at home. They dealing with mama and daddy in the house. They dealing with your character. They dealing with your attitudes. They dealing with your temperaments. They dealing with your negativity. They dealing with your dispositions. They know, let me tell you something about the devil, honey. Glory to God, our children, glory to God, amen. We're born with the devil within us. Glory to God. Let me tell you something about, amen, the unsaved. Satan recognizes everything that's his. Your children know when you ain't right. I don't care how religious you are. I don't care how religious you are and glory to God and how you dress it up and glory to God. You can, you can be the preacher. You can be the teacher. You can be the choir director. You can be the, the dancer. You can be whatever you are in that church. But when you are in their presence, their environment, they can hear a slant in your conversation. Oh, yes, they can. They can hear a, they can they come you you got the audacity to bring them to church and and let them hear the same thing you hearing and do you think for a moment that they are so ignorant that when you are not when you are out of sort that they don't know that you're not doing what they heard the word say <laughs> come on those little kids know they know you ain't real. You're not real. So they get the, and, 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 and they, you know, you can preach. You can preach. Glory to God, you can sit there and listen to your, amen. You get full up with knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. And you can articulate everything, everything you learn. You can go back and articulate it. You can counsel it. You can just talk it in conversation. And those kids like, but mama don't do that. Mama don't really feel like that now. Those kids know your emotions. They live with you. They know impurity. Mm -hmm. They know impurity. So God is saying now, you got to, this is, this is where God is taking you in this conference. This is what he, this is what he's saying. This is his final word to you. Which one of you got the guts to stand up and be the gatekeeper in your family? Which, which one of you now? Because God has took all the week to tell us what it takes to be the gatekeeper. All the week he's been telling us. All the week he's been telling us. Holy, holy, you gotta be holy. You gotta have a pure heart. 
Righteousness will exalt you. Humility will exalt you. He's been telling us that all the week. So now, if, do you really want your loved ones saved? Do you really want your children saved? Glory to God. God said, well, are you willing to do what it takes to get them saved? See, all that religious stuff won't save nobody. Your religious conversation won't save nobody. And let me tell you something. If, you're, if there's any shadow of turning, he didn't say glory to God, darkness. He said shadow. Shadow. A shadow is cast. It's not completely dark. It's not, it's not black all the way. But you can kind of see through it. A shadow. He said, there's a shadow of turning in you. I see it. I see it. And the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. It is the spirit of truth. And I don't want you to have missed what God said this week. This is the principle that you walk out of here with. When God speak, the spirit moves. When the Holy Spirit see truth in your inward parts, that's when God move in your circumstances, situations, and relationships. Did you get that this week? He's not going to move until he see truth in you. He's got to see truth in your inward part. Your heart, the Bible tells you, say the word of God is a discerner. It can separate the soul from the spirit and the thoughts and the intent of the heart. When the Holy Spirit examine you and he see that your heart is pure, then he'll move in every circumstance, every situation, and in every relationship that affects you. If you want to be the gatekeeper, you want to be the real intercessor, you got to have a pure heart. And people are quick to say, oh, my heart pure. I don't have anything against anybody. That's lies, just lies. It's so easy to tell a lie. All you have to do is move your mouth. God knows a lie. He knows when it ain't real. He knows when that ain't real. You, we so quick to say, well, I, I, don't, I ain't holding nothing against nobody. Glory to God. You know what? Glory to God. See, when something is truth, your actions show it. Oh, y'all don't hear me. I say, when you're telling the truth, we, you, you, you know what? When you're walking in truth, you don't have to say nothing. You just do. You just do. But glory to God, you can say all day, well, my heart is pure, and, and I, don't, I don't have no offenses, and, and I just don't do this, and, and I don't, I, I'm all right. I, I'm all right with everybody, and, and, I, and I, I really don't have, I, I judge myself. Honey, I, I've been fasting, and I've been praying, but you ain't doing. Which negates all of that. You got to be a doer. Love is an action word. Love means you do. You don't just talk. And sometimes you won't even talk. Some of us won't even talk until somebody confronts us. But what God is saying, stop it. You don't even have to confront. People that already know God, been in God a hundred years, what you going to tell them that they don't know? Let me deal with them. I deal with him. Let the wheat and the tails grow. I deal with him. But notice what he said. Don't miss it. He said, I'm going back to my place. See, 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 God get up early. This is what I learned. See, three and four and five o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning, it's a good time to be awake. It's a good time to be ready, for, ready to talk to God. Because he, he gets up early. He told you so. He let the prophets know when to seek him. 
He said he gets up early and his eyes are on the nation. We are his nation now. And he's getting up early to see who's seeking him. And he's, then he look around and he say, well, I'm going back to my, because and a bunch of folks up praying. A bunch of them. God wake up, God get up out of his place, and he, he said, yeah, a bunch of them praying, but they haven't acknowledged their offense. I'm going back to my place. They coming to me with a bunch of stuff in their heart, a bunch of mess, always tied up in mess. Amen. Got iniquity about this. Don't like that. I'm not, I'm not dealing with that. I'm going back to my place. You know, there are going to be a lot of people in hell because they don't have the strength of character to say they're sorry. Just can't say it. Can't say it. Can't say it. You know, you know, it's something. There are, there are, when your heart get right and you want to, you want to please God and you want to try to make it into heaven, there are people that you have hurt. There are people that all of us have hurt in our lifetime that may be done moved to China somewhere or dead and gone on and we can't fix it with them. But there are people that we have done wrong and we're looking in their face every day. Come around them all the time and, and we'll never humble ourselves and say, you know what? I just did you wrong. When you don't have the strength of character to do that, when you wake up to reality, it's going to be in hell. It's going to be in a flame of fire. It's going to be in a lake of lava. Your soul will never die. It'll be in that lake of lava, tormented throughout eternity because your pride wouldn't let you fix it. Huh? Pride wouldn't let you fix it. Pride wouldn't let you say, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm just sorry. I, 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 I did you wrong. What are people going to do? Do you kill you because you apologize? Some people can't apologize. They, they, don't even, they don't even know how to form their lips and their tongue to say, I am sorry. It goes like this. I am sorry. They can't do it. They cannot 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 do it. And God said, I can't use you. Everything you do, you're doing it on your own. You don't have the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. You don't have the Holy Spirit's fellowship. You got to do it on your own. Last thing I want to remind you of that God said this week. Then this, now this is, this one, glory to God, this is scary. It's real scary stuff. Body of Christ is presumptuous and arrogant. The Holy Spirit says, you have treated me like I am in submission to you. You have treated the Father as if you can go out and sin and you can decide to come back when you're ready. Somebody just told me the other day, said one of my, one of my saints that's out there that left, glory to God, this child was worshiping God, one of our worshipers, worshiping God and, and, and just decided to just to go out and just take a sin break and wouldn't confront it, her, her testimony is, I, I know, I know, been in BT a long time, I, I, I know, I know, but I'm not ready. I'm not ready to come back. I'm not ready to come out of sin. I, I, I'm not ready. This is just recent. This is somebody that's been in God for years, but have decided to take a sin break. And, and is presumptuous enough to think that when she's ready to come back to God, she can come. Now that's arrogance. God brought me back to a vision. 
I saw Jesus come through that door. I was up here preaching, one of the world conferences. I was up here preaching, and I saw Jesus walk through that door. And he came down this aisle. We had a lot more chairs here, but we had a little, little aisle here. And there were, you know, had this, this row here. There was somebody sitting in the outside row right there on the end. And Jesus was walking down the aisle, and he was walking very slow. And he was looking straight ahead. And the, the person, one of the people that was standing there got my attention. I, I, my, my attention went to that person, and I, and I said, cry out to him, cry out to him, tell him to stop, tell him to stop, stop Jesus, stop Jesus, because I know they needed Jesus, they needed Jesus, and he's coming by right now, he's coming right next, and he's almost to them. He's walking down this aisle, and he's almost, they're sitting like in the second or third row, and he's almost there, and, and, and I said, cry out to him, cry out to him, cry out to him, cry out to him, get in his way, grab him, hold him. And that, and that person wouldn't move, they stood like this. I was in a vision. The person stood like this, and Jesus walked right on by. He came on, and I came out of the vision. Don't you let God pass you by. Don't you let him pass you by. And don't you be presumptuous to think that you can get back when you get ready. Lastly, check yourself. Are you walking in the unity of the faith? Are you walking in the unity of the faith? Are you unified with what the Holy Spirit is doing? Or are you a renegade? Are you calling your shots? Are you doing what you want to do, when you want to do it, if you want to do it, and how you want to do it? Huh? Didn't God tell us about that this week? The Holy Spirit is the guide. He is our guide. He is our leader, and God say, I'm, I want you to take Bible teachers and give it back over to the Holy Ghost. Saints, I want to address the young people right quick. Something, something, a, a person just passed. A person just died, and, and a, a person just died. A person died, and they was very young. But God let me hear of it. God let me hear of it. Um, and so I'm not going to, you know, call the whole situation out because I don't want to, you know, I don't know if that's okay to do. But God let me hear of the person's passing, and they were young. And one of the things that was testified, and I'm only doing this because the Holy Spirit told me to do this, was that they had COVID, and they went out, they died, but they were brought back. They were brought back. And when they brought, was brought back, they was terrified. And they was asking God to forgive them. Mm. And then they died. Oh, my God. My God. Oh, thank you for mercy. Hell is real. Jesus. Hell is real. Yes, sir. They brought them back for a few minutes. And they were saying, Lord, please don't let me die. Please, please, Lord, Lord, please. Because they had lived a lifestyle, a lesbian lifestyle. And now they were at the end. And I believe that when they were out, they glimpsed their eternity. And when they came back, they was hoping to stay here. Hell is real. Hell is real. If you don't know God, get to know him tonight. I know we're about to do something, but this is very important. When I heard that, I was thinking, Lord, what about us? What about us that have our fences, all kinds of stuff that at the end of your life, 
at the end of your life, none of, none of our offenses, none of the our positions on issues, none of that's going to matter. You know, none of that's going to matter. Saints, if you feel like God is talking to you, let's pray together. I feel like God talking to me. You know, I feel like God, let me hear that for a reason. That a person came back and they was begging to stay here. But like the message has been all week, you can't come to God when you want to. You got to come when he's calling. If anybody hear God calling them now, let's do, let's, let's come to the altar again. If you hear God calling you now, if there's anything in your heart that the enemy says that you can't let this go, let's, 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 let's come to the altar now. You can't come when you want to. You got to come when he calls. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, glory, glory. It's okay. I'm getting, I'm gonna get down here with you. Because I know God let me hear that for me. Hallelujah. But I, I just want to extend it. Anybody, if you feel like, you know what? God want me to hear this. God want me to hear this. Then you make your way to the altar. Don't let nothing keep you in your seat. That, that, that person wanted to stay in this world and could not, Mom. Could not. Could not stay. And they was, they say that, that, that the person had a horrified look on their face when they pass. And God, I wouldn't let nothing keep me from, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. I wouldn't let, after hearing that, my Lord, And that happened a few minutes ago. A few minutes ago. My Lord. My Lord. Come on, let's cry out to the Lord. Have mercy, God. Have mercy, God. Have mercy, God. Have mercy, God. Somebody need to call on his name, Jesus. His name is Jesus. If you don't know what to say, just say, Jesus, have mercy on me. He's the son of the living God. He will save you tonight. He will deliver you tonight. He will purge you tonight. He will purge you tonight. You don't know when your end is. You don't have to make it home tonight. Don't let pride stand in the way. Don't let pride stand in the way, come on. Cry out to him. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. Come on, cry out, his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Hossa. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Come on, call him. Call him out. Call him out. He'll come and see about you. Come on, let him purge you. Let him purge all that ugly stuff out of you. 
because you don't know you don't know when death will take you out of here your heart can just stop beating just simply stop beating and you will spend eternity in hell say Jesus have mercy on me Jesus have mercy on me Jesus I may not understand everything but Jesus have mercy on me if there's power in your name if I need you Jesus if I need you then meet me where I am Lord come see about me if I do need you if this thing is real if I need you then Jesus come see about me call on his name call on his name you don't know what to say just call on his name Jesus, Jesus, have mercy, Jesus, have mercy, Jesus, have mercy, Jesus. Lord, don't leave me. Lord, don't leave me alone, Lord, please. Don't stop dealing with me, Lord. Don't stop talking to me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Clergy, please come. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're just letting the Holy Spirit have his way. This is his service. He can do as he please. Hallelujah. Oh God. You know this second altar call could have saved someone's life tonight. Come on. It could have saved someone's life. could have saved someone's life. You know, when they were stoning Peter, P, uh, Stephen, Stephen said, don't lay this sin to their charge. Apostle Kareem was teaching that and he said, S Stephen took time to pray for those people before he died. The Apostle Paul was standing there. His name was Saul, which owned to become one of the greatest apostles. But through prayer, through intercession, standing there killing a man, but the man he killed prayed for him. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> I love y'all so much. I love my church. I love my people. Amen. We're going to worship God. Now, giving that. If you love Dr. Banks, then you love the work that I do. Amen. <laughs>